today we're gonna take our shortest travel day ever. What really happened? Learn from our mistakes. Please. One of my favorite things about this life on the road are all the tiny little towns we've discovered along the way. We would have never stopped in any of these places had we vacationed the traditional way. And Seabrook, Texas turned out to be one of those hidden little gems. You know we love our mom and pops, so we found a place here in Seabrook called Seabrook Waffle Company. No, it's Seabrook Waffle Company and Espresso Bar. Exactly. Which is really what I said. He was yeah. trying to get me, but he didn't. Yeah. So instead of bread on their sandwiches, they use waffles. And the waffles are supposed to be delicious, so let's find out. So which one did you get though, before I have, you jump in? Oh, uh, mine's the Monte Cristo, which is ham and what's that ham and turkey and bacon and cheese and i have mac and cheese oh. with bacon on top of my check waffle. it out so i'm going for the mac and cheese right. first i'm savory feel sweet go mm, that's wrong <laughs> mm. Mm. mac and cheese is good okay so the waffle still has a hint of sweetness to it mm. so you definitely don't need syrup or anything on this oh my gosh this is really delicious mm. Mm. We're going to have to trade bites. The waffle is really good. Mm-hmm. I found tacos. And not only is it a taco shop, but they're redoing an old Texaco, and they're keeping some of the original features. Check it out. This is right across the street from our waffle place. But it's not open yet. So the girls in the waffle shop said they can't wait for it to open. They're dying to come check it out. So if you make your way down here, check out this taco shop and let us know if it's worth making the visit. Seabrook has a cool thing that you can come looking for when you come and visit the city and there are these cool pelicans. They started them a while back to get tourists to have something to do and lure them here into town and you'll find them all over the place. So we're at a small little park and they're lining the park. The trail system that we've been on has been pretty flat. It's been pretty consistent throughout the area. It's been a really nice ride, and I think we've ridden almost six miles and wouldn't even know it. I might have to go up from one to two on my e-bike, but it's time to get rolling. <laughs> it's getting hot. It is getting hot, but I got to tell you, I've done more pedaling today on that bike than I have in a long time. So Don't tell our secrets. <laughs> yeah. We've been bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's always, you know, I forget how nice it is to get out on the bikes and ride in new areas. So now that it's getting warmer out and and nicer out. I think we have to break those things out a lot more. Mm -hmm. Recently we had our RV ceramic coated and while we were there we learned a lot from the pros about how to clean the RV and what products work best. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Release Cleaner and Degreaser. Once you try Release, it will be your go-to cleaning product for every surface inside and outside the RV. What we love most about this product is it's made in the USA, biodegradable and non-toxic. It also does not have a chemical odor and is fragrance free, so it's not gonna stink up the inside of your RV. It's safe enough to even use on ceramic coatings for those occasional stubborn bugs that need a little elbow grease. Release cuts through the dirt and grime, including baked on bug guts on the front cap and carbon soot on the tires. And oh, don't forget your tow car, boat, or even golf cart. You can pick up Release in their 32 ounce ready to use spray bottle, but the cheapest way to use Release is with their Ultra Concentrate. Each gallon of Release Ultra Concentrate will make 80 ready to use 32 ounce bottles at just over a buck a bottle. Use our coupon code to save 10% off your purchase. And if you order today, they are also also offering free shipping on any purchase over 75 bucks if you're ordering from the lower 48 so don't wait pick up release today and the next time you're parked beside us you can compete with Phil for the cleanest RV in the campground
Number one tip of the day, do not come to the Houston Space Center during spring break. <laughs> yeah, big no-no. There were a ton of people here, but it's good to see all these people out checking out history. I was more curious about the 747 that transported the shuttle back in the day. Walking through that, that was pretty cool. That was neat. All right, so let's let's do the rest of the tips real quick. So we yeah. can we can go eat because that really is our priority right now. Starving right now. So first, buy all your tickets online and you'll save five dollars for every adult. Two, you will still have to pay for parking. Yeah. When you get here, which is ridiculous. There I goes your five dollar savings. I know. I don't know why they just don't add it into the cost of the ticket, but whatever. So be prepared to pay for parking. There is an app you use now to pay. You know, I guess it is what it is. This is owned by one, and the parking's owned by somebody. So somebody's getting that five bucks we saved. I don't know. So after almost six years on the road, today we're going to take our shortest travel day ever. Best travel day in my mind. Less time behind the wheel for me. I love it. It actually is going to take us more time to close up, get on the road than it is for us to get there. So it's about a 10 minute drive. We'll say 15 with traffic. Yeah. And today we're obviously not going to hook the Jeep up to the back of the rig because we're only going a few few minutes down the road. It will take longer to hook it up than it actually is going to take us to get there. So the question for you is, hmm. when do you decide not to hook up your tow car? When is your drive too short? Yeah. What's your, is it a time limit? Is it a mileage? Is it a... Need just a break? <laughs> just don't want to do it. I mean, you do you need a break from your spouse so make her drive behind you or him drive behind you? What is it? And we have friends who like to stop in and do their grocery shopping in route, and sometimes they won't hook up because she's going to pop in and hit the grocery store. I kind of like that idea. But no, I don't because so I like to shop for my groceries. <laughs> well, not only that, Phil doesn't like me not to navigate. So he's so scared that he's not going to pay attention, which happens frequently, and he's going to miss his turn. That may have happened... A billion Five times. Five or ten times, <laughs> yes. Please drive to highlighted route. I want to go fast. that that 12 minute drive went without a hitch. But here's what really happened, Phil. What had happened was... Hey, where are you? How did I beat you here? I don't know if I'm pulling into the right spot. You'll go through one stop sign and take a right at the second. All right, I'm gonna go in and check in. Just follow the signs to the office. Hello? I'm in the, obviously the wrong spot. Okay, where are you? I don't know. I you said go take a right at the orange marquee sign. I did, but I'm not in. Yes. The... Okay, where are you? Keep, just keep following it. You'll see signs for the office. Follow what? Just I'm, keep. I'm driving through. On that road. There's no. I'm in the middle of the campground. Okay, are you in the campground far from the the stop sign, or did you go straight into past that orange sign? You said go in past the stop sign and make a right at the orange marquee. That's what I did. So I came into the campground. Okay, if you went into the orange one, you're in the wrong one. You're supposed to take a right at the stop sign you, and follow the road around. You told me to go through there. Okay, turn around and come out of there, and you're going to take a left when you go to exit that campground. All right, I'll figure it out. Okay, let me back. So let's talk about what we did wrong and what we will do next time so this never happens again. Yeah. Phil will actually sit down and look at our route. <laughs> so what normally happens is I'm the navigator. I will go online. I will map it out. I'll look at the street view when we're trying to look at us coming into the campground. So I make sure I know exactly what entrance to go into. Well, I did that because that's what I normally do. Mm -hmm. I should have brought Phil over to look at it as well. That way he will know exactly where to go. I don't know why we didn't do that, yeah. knowing that we're both driving independently. Yeah, and that's where. I really messed up. I knew where we were going. I knew the name of the campground. So that's why when we were driving, I was driving down the road. Stacy was, she had already got to the campground in front of me because. I passed him. <laughs> again, I was, I was following the Garmin the, and I was listening to the Garmin because it was off on passenger side where she normally sits. So I could hear it. And it told me to take a left and then go straight down the road for six miles. Well, there's a new stretch of road here. Uh, the freeway, the highway is brand new yeah. and it's not even showing up on our navigation yet. It bypasses all the lights that I hit 
on the old road that this new road has replaced. So Stacy was behind me. She knew to get on that road and go down. Because I I did yeah. all the research on where we were going, which definitely was a fail for us. Yeah, so she beat me there. So when I, I was driving in, I saw the big orange sign in front of me, and I was like, wait a minute, that's not the name of the campground. So that's why you hear the confusion, like, okay, where am I supposed to go? And my Garmin said I had arrived <laughs> as I got to that stop sign that you see yeah. right before the orange sign. So I figured I had arrived. That's where I was going. So I was a little confused where I was at on the road when I was trying to tell Stacy where I was at. What I had said was you're going to go through two stop signs and yep. then take a right. And you can see at the second stop sign the huge billboard that has the name of our campground that Phil swore did not exist. But <laughs> yeah, the FBI calls that a clue. I missed it. So that is where he was supposed to turn. But unfortunately, when I said you're going to go through two stop signs, he had already went through one and forgotten it existed and counted the second stop sign as the first stop sign. So anyway, it's a long story to say we gooned that up. But thankfully, Phil only pulled into a campground. Yeah. So there was no danger of him not fitting where he was driving. Yeah. And I could just drive around the campground and come back out. But <laughs> So it was really my fault. Not There was nothing Stacy's doing. It was all my fault. But where have you ever been where there's two campgrounds right next to each other and it's and it's that close um, of oh, a turn into don't one? Don't try to another. make it okay because the sign for the <laughs> campground that he was going to was right in front of him. Right in front of him. So it there was. is no excuse. There so I would love for you guys to put in the comments what you typically do to make sure this doesn't happen to you, whether you're driving together or apart. Any advice you have will be great for those with less experience than you. That way we can all stay safe together. That's right. Learn from our mistakes. Please, always learn from well, us. Don't do what we do. <laughs> mainly my mistakes. So there you have it.